This is This Week in Perspective with me, Adam Simbeye. The Minister for Finance and Economic Affairs last week, Thursday, 8th June, presented a budget for 2017-2018 at, at the National Assembly. Uh, the budget, which is uh, estimated at a shillings 31.7 trillion um, for the financial year, as I said, 2017-2018. In general, the budget has been well received by the public. Experts, however, and um, the private sector, as I feel, as, as say, the, um, this is a, a feel-good uh, budget. Um, Others said, well, it's a good budget, but let us not uh, celebrate too quickly. Um, to discuss this budget and its implication to the economy, general life of Tanzania, the private sector, business, trade, and industry, with me today, I'm privileged to have on my right, for the first time, Rehema Mashaka Mbugi. She's representing the Tanzania Private Sector Foundation. Yes. She's, she's responsible or head or whatever, specialist on uh, trade and investment. Yes. Next is uh, a regular participant. He's not participating for the first time. This is Joseph Limo. He's a managing partner of Price Waterhouse and Coopers. Next, another regular participant. Uh, Dr. Bohela Runegero, who is an e economics and social analyst. Last but not least, for the first time, is Frank Daffa from Confederation of Tanzania Industries, and he's also a special trade specialist on trade. So particip particip participating for the first time, both of you. So we welcome you, and particularly for you, to you, Rehema. You are, thank you. You are. You have uh, height, you have really made my program exciting today because it's not usual to balance gender. Yeah. All right? It has always been difficult. So mm. this is a special thing for you. Okay. Now, I hope we'll do justice to this budget and um, feel free yeah. to, to join in the discussion. I'll start with the Dr. Runagero um, very quickly. And then the rest of you will come in and answer more or less the same question. Um, why do you think this budget has been well received? And do you think this is a good budget for everybody or none at all? Uh, Adam, that's a very interesting but somewhat tricky question to answer. <laughs> uh, but to me, as, 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 as a part, uh, partially development planner, uh, I've been, uh, I was excited uh, the fact that uh, the fact that uh, uh, Dr. Mpango has tried to make sure that this budget uh, is an improvement of the previous one in terms of actually being compliant, mm -hmm. complying to uh, international agenda for development. You could see like the strategic development goals 2030. It has some attributes which requires each country to follow. Um, that should leave nobody behind. So in this uh, Dr. Mpango's budget, you could see it has tried to put some attributes which actually try to take everybody uh, to, to move together, yes. to talk about the machine. No one is left women. behind. No, no one should be left behind. Mm -hmm. But also you look at the Africa vision, uh, mining vision. The African mining vision, which was passed by the African Union, also actually instructs African governments that enough is enough when it comes to natural resources, when it comes to minerals, that we should from now on try to make sure that we take control and we maximize, optimize the tax and the benefits we get from the mining industry. Mm. That, you could say in that budget... That something. particular aspect of your response, Dr. Rodagero, is a special, is a topic for a special program, exactly. but it's nice exactly. to have referred to with the hind hindsight of what is going on now. Exactly. You could say now when it comes to SADC, in the East African community, yes. they have actually uh, again instructed their member countries to go for industries. That's the high time for industrialization. You could see he has tried to make sure that there are uh, components there which will stimulate uh, industrial uh, pro production. 
so 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 if if you look at at at, at those aspects, of course, for him. Luckily, also the CCM man election manifesto yes. has some um, a lot of elements which he is trying also to to, to, to implement in, the, in in this in this budget. Mm -hmm. And you could see the way it was received. Uh, it was certainly uh, an evidence that it is, it's a popular. For me, I thought it was like a, a pre-election budget, it, <laughs> winning the hearts of the voters. Yeah. Although the election <laughs> is a bit too far away, away, so yeah. I could. Uh, so I say, okay, those tricks now, is, they are nice, actually, issues uh, which he has, he has introduced, which uh, uh, if it does well, uh, then next year again, keep on improving. Uh, for, 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 for sure, Tanzania will be better off uh, than it has been for, for many years. And so, so I see some, some promise there uh, okay. in terms of attracting inv new investments in yeah. all the sectors, yes. uh, in, in trying to, to, to stimulate and uh, uh, encourage farmers. Uh, to, to, to continue farming more profitably, reducing ta tax rates when it comes to agriculture produce, uh, in, in, in uh, trying to promote uh, industrialists, those who are interested in investing. Uh, uh, there are some areas I was talking to my young, uh, my colleague here, that there are some things which when government responds, you, you receive with a mixed reaction because you say, we have been saying this for the past 15 years. Yes. Why did it take 15 years for you? But then it's a good thing anyway. So you, you have, have to, to start. You, you have to start somewhere. But so, so I think it's, 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 to me, it's, it's a good budget. Um, as we continue talking, I'm sure there will be some 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 uh, weaknesses, pitfalls here mm. and there, some precautions. But what what I marked uh, the, the 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 confidence he had. Mm. In, in introducing some of the measures, especially those related, for example, on uh, collecting tax through fuel, mm. uh, fuel, fuel, fuel system, is because actually of the, of, the, of, the, of the success the government has had so far in implementing the EFD system in, in all the petrol stations. Yes, yes. So, so it means that uh, uh, it will the success of collecting uh, the 40 shillings tax to replace the motor vehicle tax will depend largely, to a large extent mm -hmm. actually, on uh, improving uh, on on on, on uh, the electronic uh, collection um, uh, receipt system yeah. from our petrol stations. Mm -hmm. If that fails, uh, I think there will be a problem in terms of. But I, I don't see that failing okay. because let's, I think it, it let's hope there will be no failure. There will be no, no failure. failure. So okay. that's why I'm very optimistic and yes. happy about the budget. All right, yeah. uh, uh, Joseph Limo. Yes. What do you say to that? Uh, Is it a popular? Is it a popular budget? Is it it was know. well received, that's the assumption, but we could see the clapping in the house. But the majority of those who are clapping were CCM, naturally, we should support because it's a CCM budget and so many other things. Now, let's hear from you. Uh, okay, without, without being political about yes. whether the clapping came in from fact, CCM. In fact, on my program, them. politics is out. <laughs> <laughs> it's only professional. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, uh, our analysis, or, or should I say the business sector analysis, I work in the business sector mostly. Uh, for you to say whether the budget is good or not, you need to look at the business environment currently. Mm -hmm. And then see if the, when the budget came, did yes. it address the issues that are actually facing the business environment? Mm. And uh, in that case, therefore, I would say uh, there are a lot of things that came in that actually were addressed to uh, business environment and mm. for which is good mm. in the sense that uh, uh, there was a bit of crunch in the market already uh, mm. in terms of liquidity. Mm. The businesses were not moving as good as they're supposed to be moving. And uh, the minister came in and pro uh, provided some uh, measures like there's a change, I can just give a very good example. There's a change in the VAT Act, which allowed zero rating of uh, ancillary transportation services mm. for goods in transit. And that has a very, uh, and you'll see that was very well cheered in the parliament. In the transporters. Yeah, yeah not even, the, uh, even in the parliament, and uh, that uh, all the parliamentarians went wild and, uh, and clapped about that. And one would ask why. Are they, are they all transport, uh, in the transport all, business? Yeah, but then they are all pro uh, using our port as an opening uh, place. Okay. And, our, uh, and our port has actually was stuck for, for quite a, some time. Uh, yes. A lot of businesses across the region, the landlocked countries, were not using our port because it became expensive because of charging VAT on the services that were uh, been offered for goods that are actually destined in Rwanda or Congo or Zambia. Yes, yes. And you can, VAT being a domestic tax could not be claimed. Okay, so by the minister saying, now I'm reversing that and making it uh, zero, 
Mm. You're actually opening the doors and making uh, the port more active. Now, the effect of that is uh, bringing more business into the country, allowing more uh, transporters to actually work, allowing hotels and business around Kariakou to, to actually uh, work. So in the process, actually, of fueling the economic activities and increasing your tax collections. Okay. Yeah, so, and then when you go to other areas like some exemptions that have been put in relation to capital goods, mm -hmm. in relation to some sectors. Uh, so the minister provided the exemption completely on machinery for agriculture processing. Mm -hmm. And with this relates to textiles, relates to uh, edible oils, mm -hmm. and uh, it also relates to pharmaceuticals and the sort. Mm -hmm. So actually you are encouraging those areas to actually invest more. And if you're encouraging them to invest more, you're also encouraging industrialization, mm -hmm. which is the talk of the day uh, with the current uh, with the current Long government term objective yeah, like and, 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 and you're not only just encouraging any other industrialization you're encouraging agricultural processing industrialization which goes down to touch the normal the normal mkulima okay. and uh, this normal mkulima you have reduced the excess uh, you want his products to be processed and in the process uh, increase value and give him more economic power I mean as my uh, other participants said there might be some missed opportunities, uh, mm -hmm. which maybe I'll discuss in okay, another. later. All right. Thank you very much for that introductory comment on the. Um, the only lady, yeah. I'll give you a chance now. Uh, what do you say to the very first question, which I'm sure you heard? Yeah. Why was it very well received in Parliament, and um, is, it re is it really a good budget? Is it a budget for everybody uh, well or nobody? Well, indeed, I can say it's um, it's a good budget. It, as um, previous participants have already said, uh, they've tried to pull in everyone from the Mamaleshe, Machinga, and everybody to come in. To, so they've tried to broaden the tax base, as we are seeing. Uh, yet they've also tried to reduce the taxes, levies, and some charges, and. Um, I can say also we have seen the shift of um, taxes from direct to indirect, like what is happening in the motor vehicle system. Um, for general, I can just say they've done the, this could be the most honest and highest level of commitment uh, they've shown as compared to By last there year. you mean the government? Yeah. Yes, the government has shown as compared <coughs> to last year because you've seen a lot of business environment issues which was raised by the business community last year have been tried to be addressed. Also, the Minister of Finance has promised to engage more with the, pub uh, with the private sector uh, through public-private dialogue. Mm -hmm. They've promised that. They've also uh, recognized or still recognize that the private sector should and is the engine of economic growth. So I would say, generally, it's a good budget. Um, I suppose those are the views of the Tanzania Private Sector Foundation. As well, yeah. As well, is yes, that? Okay, yes. let's see, let's see um, what uh, Frank has to say in terms of uh, the Confederation of Tanzania Industries. Uh, you're more in industries and uh, manufacturing. Is this a, a good budget for you? Uh, have you accepted it? I'm sure in the past, uh, your organization was involved in the preliminary stages of preparation of this yes. budget. Yes. So, do you think this is a good budget? Is it pro-industry and manufacturing? Yeah, um, just to agree with the, the, the participants around the table, um, we have uh, accepted the budget positively because as, as, you, as it was presented, it brings out a lot of positives uh, from the government's uh, intention to have an industrialized economy. So as you, as you can hear some of the measures that the government has tried to take, especially in the agriculture sector, which we believe is a crucial sector to develop in order to have a stable industrialized economy. So we know from the exemptions that uh, have been made on some capital goods mm -hmm. and some products such as the compounded animal feeds, we believe uh, such measures are indication of the commitment of the government to have a, a stable industrial economy that is built from, you know, agricultural-based uh, processing and things like that. 
so we, we have accepted the budget in a very positive light especially if you, you listen to the minister on his uh, introductory remarks yes he identified some of the issues that were uh, challenges to businesses mm. things like the confidence of investors yes and they said they, they will be working to try to revitalize the, the confidence of investors so that they can have a, a stable investment environment for for, for their businesses and they even identified some of the figures from the doing business report, which shows the position of Tanzania in, the, in terms of doing business. So he has identified some of the things that we have been talking about for a long time. And we believe him noting them is a, is a good sign that the government is now noticing. Or oh, listening. Yeah, it yes. is noticing the need of business yeah. to have a good environment <coughs> in order for, for them to have the revenue that they want in, the, in their budget and to have a stable industry economy. So we have uh, we have received it with uh, with rejoice in some of the areas, and there are, there are some that are as a manufacturer is happy. There is a mixed uh, opinion. Oh, okay, tell us yes. if it's a mix. What? Why should it be a mix when <laughs> you say everything? Is more or less, the, your issues, your concerns have been addressed. Yes, there there are some manufacturers. For example, you, you can look at um, some of the import because most of our industries still rely on imports and they have some inputs that are still very highly charged in taxes. Mm. So we have people like in the sugar making Industry. soft drinks. Mm. 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 They still have some uh, taxes in there that uh, they still think they, they are too much for them. Okay. And they would want like the 15% input or duty, zero. which was, was just put there as a precaution for regulating abuse of sugar. Mm. Most of them still think it's, uh, it's unnecessary and they think the measures that are there right now because you can't import sugar without a permit. You can't import sugar, you know, you can't use it without being audited by TRI and things like that. So they think there's no need of adding more tax to, to control yes. the use of sugar. And there are some, some manufacturers, especially in the edible oil sector, I think uh, my colleague here from PwC can say more on the impact, but they have been affected by the 10% duty on crude palm oil, which is used to make uh, refined oil and other products mm. from... Mm. from from mm. the cool palm oil. Mm. So they, they are in the opinion that such taxes, although the government is putting them for a good reason, they say they want to promote sunflower oil, Yes. but we know these products can still be used together. There is no need to, to tax another one in order to promote <coughs> the other. So we still think there, there is more that the government can do to balance okay. the situation. Yeah. Let's hope so in the next budget this will be taken into account. Mm -hmm. Let me come to, to you, Rehema, very yes. quickly. Yes. Um, do you think this budget and the measures that have been proposed and once implemented, they will create a competitiveness in as far as the private sector is concerned? Yeah, as I've said before, as in general, we say we are going to, ex to see or to witness eco uh, improved economic performance, yes. Uh, to what extent it shall be known there when we reach there, but emphasize, as we have all mentioned here, emphasize should be made in addressing the constraints which have been already highlighted under the government roadmap for improving business environment in Tanzania. I mean, the issues are known, and um, because the minister has highlighted one of those issues, as in the key areas which they are going to address under this coming fiscal year that is addressing the issue of bureaucracy. I mean, I don't have to spend five days to start a business. Mm -hmm. mm? How, ma how, how many days do you want to spend? Or do you propose to spend? Now, according to, is it New Zealand? I think it's New Zealand is the country which is reading among the 190 economies which are being assessed under the doing business report of World Bank. They are spending less than a day. It's actually three hours. I mean, yes. Three I've, hours. I've lived and worked in New Zealand yes. for two years. Uh, in my, now, in my if career. the one reading is you spending three <coughs> hours yeah. to register somebody mm. to start a business, mm. why would I spend all those days? I mean, um, it would be a good budget bringing <laughs> out a good economic performance if and only if the issues which are highlighted in the business environment 
are addressed okay. on time. Can I, can I hope I, the minister, I just, I I hope the minister is, is here. He will hear this when he, if he watches the program. Can yes. I, can, um, I just, can I just add? I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 it's it's very important on uh, on uh, the doing business environment, and. Uh, this has been a, an outcry for, for quite a, a long time. And uh, in May, beginning of May, the this minister year. this year, mm. the minister for industry and trade and minister for finance, yeah. they called the private sector to the DOMA yeah. for a private sector government or public sector dialogue. Mm. Mm. And uh, PwC were charged with the task of preparing the keynote uh, mm. paper. Mm. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I was the one pre who prepared that paper and I presented it. Uh, it was supposed to be a very small gathering, but when we went there, when the private sector heard that the government wanted to uh, have a discussion with them, they came in multitude. Mm -hmm. There were like 200 people from all over mm -hmm. the country. Oh, and the government uh, also had like 40 people. So we are talking of uh, ministers, uh, deputy ministers, mm -hmm. permanent directors secretaries, and directors, commissioners, yes. and parliamentarians, okay. uh, around 20. So the room was like 300 people. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, when I was told to stand at the, to at the, at the top and do the presentation, mm. uh, I felt cheated because uh, TPSF told me it's going to be a small meeting. Mm -hmm. and, and suddenly, uh, suddenly it's a in front of you, uh, yeah, 300 and, and, and one thing that came out very clearly yes. is the lack of trust between the uh, private sector mm -hmm. and the government. Who the doesn't sense. trust the other? Uh, the private sector says uh, the, uh, the government does not trust the private sector. Uh, so the government actually... And vice versa, the private sector doesn't believe the government. It's not, it's not the vice versa, because, <laughs> the, because the private sector believe that in the absence of the, of the public sector, they cannot uh, survive. The pri public sector has to be there to do regulations, to actually give directions and everything. But then when the private sector is acting, the public sector needs to believe that they are acting genuinely. Okay. Yeah. Now, that is what was lacking. Mm -hmm. And the minister said, I mean, uh, he came up very strongly and said, no, this is just a perception. But the fact that there's a perception, then there's a little bit of, tr of truth in it. Mm -hmm. But the good thing what, what Rehema is saying and what I'm echoing, echoing is that uh, when he was reading his budget, he came out very clearly. And there are these perceptions, and I want mm -hmm. them to go. That's one. Secondly, uh, I want to start engaging them going forward. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, I am recognizing that the private sector is the engine for and growth. growth. Yeah. Excellent. So, which which is a very okay. is a very positive. But thing. three hours in New Zealand. You lived in New Zealand yeah. for over three years. Doing business, you want to start a business, you want to invest in in New Zealand, whether mm. it's Auckland or whatever. Three hours. Yes, the, you, you're talking from of the start to the final. You're talking of technology, uh, Mr. Sim, Mr. Simbe. You're talking of. Uh, you come in with all the documentation yeah. that are required, yes. load them online, yes. uh, do the name search online, yes. and these people will actually look at if the name is available, they'll give it to you, you apply for it, in three yeah. hours you have your certificate on hand. So we are talking of uh, vessels uh, going to Brella physically, yeah. lodging the documents there, them taking maybe... And uh, somebody who accepts them will delay Dahlia. He wants to get 5,000 5, shillings for his tea before he accepts them. I, I, I can't say that. Is it so? We can do... <laughs> they have improved. We can yeah. Do, yeah, they have improved. At Brera? Yes, and under the tax force for roadmap of improving business environment, which is championed under the Prime Minister's office, they are working to improve this issue of Brela and other agencies more. By now we can register the name of the business online. Yes. Mm. Yeah. But we want it to be improved more. And that is was just an example. These issues go as down as getting a construction permit mm. where maximumly we are being rated we are spending ninety days till when the council meeting takes place for them to approve. But I know they are undergoing uh, improvements which are being done under the pure rag right now. They are coming out with a guideline which will reduce a bit uh, the procedures of passing to the council meetings and the like. So yeah, the tax reduction, the charges, the levies, uh, improvement in compliance and all that. Yes, that could work, but we still need to address this issue of the procedures. How are we going to simplify them to make it easy for someone to pay for business license, 
for someone to get a land for investment? How long would it take? Have you, have you, so for the private sector, sorry, yeah. for, uh, doctor, um, for you as, 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 as a private sector representative of the industry, have you raised the issue of the kind of a centralized um, center for processing the application for doing business? Because I understand. I mean, you have to have TIC there, you have to have Brera here, you have to have Minister of Industry here. Why all these instead of having one stop center. just one yeah, one stop center, one, one window? window. With, with TIC you get you there and that. you finish within three hours. With, with, with TIC, you can do that because they have everything uh, uh, there. But, uh, but but under one roof, they have immigration there. They have. Uh, uh, Brella there, they have TRI office there and everything you can do that under one roof. Yeah. Uh, still takes time because they have to actu actually go back to their head office to get mm. clearance before mm. they, they, mm. they can mm. issue. But again, maybe uh, not to be too ambitious, uh, New Zealand is very far, but then yes. uh, just across the border Rwanda. go to Rwanda. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they take around 24 hours to actually yeah. do, do. So if you can do for 12 hours, mm -hmm. yeah. it's a plus, isn't it? Yes, mm -hmm. it's a plus. All right, all right, all right. Let, let's move. Um, I mean, I, 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 I get the impression here that you, the four panelists here believe that this budget was good, it was yeah. represented, just taking care of everybody. Yeah. So, but the fundamental question is how will the government implement this? budget proposals. Where would it get the 31.7 trillion shillings? And how? Dr. Runagero. Oh, okay, I thought you were asking the, the, the tax man. No, no, <laughs> he, 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 he responded too. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I think uh, the, the realism, how realistic is the budget? I think maybe that's the, 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 the best question. Is yes. it realistic? Realistic in terms of ability to raise the revenue? Uh, and able to, ability to implement what has been promised, mm -hmm. and uh, to spend as a and plan. to spend as as, as planned. And I, th I, th I think uh, uh, if you look at what uh, uh, Dr. Mpango, uh, if you listen to what he was saying, uh, he said the previous budget he has managed as, a, as a, uh, by April, end of April, uh, at by seventy percent, meaning. Leave if you factor in for the past for the, the, the remaining two percent, it means this budget is, li is likely to be implemented by 85 percent. So you have like a deficit of 15 percent. Um, now he believes that uh, the measures he's taking, the innovations he has brought in into this budget, uh, will actually make sure that uh, it is implemented as planned, meaning uh, the same because. He has not changed much in terms of the, 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 the tax base, the target base, the sources mm. are almost the same. He just played around with the psychology of saying, if you pay, if you pay tax without feeling pain, you pay more. Uh, so <laughs> there's more. <laughs> the, 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 uh, so he also made, made sure that um, there's more uh, compliance, voluntary, uh, the compliance to, tax, uh, to, to, to paying tax is, is raised. And, um, um, one of the, 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 the setbacks actually, for example, in the property tax was uh, the, the valuation of some of the properties from around me like three years ago I was told to pay, we used to pay in Mbezi Beach around 70,000 shillings, uh, 70, shillings per, 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 per house, per storage house. And then suddenly uh, when they transferred that to our local government authorities to start collecting, they came uh, to, to do some valuation and then I got a bill of 750,000 eh, shillings. And then when I compared eh, to my colleagues with the same house like mine, how much are you paying? Wezangu, how much are you paying? I said, oh, for another one, 300,000, another one, 250,000. Uh, no consistency. Uh, no consistency. So I had to appeal. When they came to review again, then they uh, lowered it to around 250,000 shillings. So, so, so you can imagine, of course, I had to pay now. But I appealed because I was the only one being. So you can imagine why did they put that? And many people were saying, "Now, you are late. You should have intervened earlier." Yes. So it, you know what it means by saying intervening. <laughs> so, so now by having only two two bands, mm -hmm. the, the ten thousand and seventy thousand, it's hoped that people will pay more voluntarily, mm -hmm. easily, without being pushed, without complaining. Because I spent like two weeks trying to 
pass around to make sure that it is revised. So you can imagine, maybe, maybe many people didn't even bother. Maybe they just sat on those tax invoices and until today they have never paid. So, so you can imagine now by coming with such measures, making sure that it's easier to pay tax, uh, he hopes that uh, things will move better. When it comes to hoping that by removing the, 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 the uh, reducing the, 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 the tax on capital goods, more industries will, will, will open up. Maybe the, of course there, there's a time lag, maybe of one year, because you can't suddenly put any factor in within the one year, is what she was saying. Mm. But at least in the long run, mm. uh, it will. This one is on the positive side. It will stimulate more more industries to to set up base base in, in, in the country. It reduced in, uh, the tax on inputs for making juices, for example. So that that all will will mm. will, 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 will bring on more. Yeah. more, more Boela, more you are money. close to the World Bank. Uh, I I believe even Dr. Mpango is. Has the World Bank said anything? I haven't read. I had anything about this budget. Because usually IMF and the World Bank usually would say something. Yeah? Have they said something? Uh, to the best of my knowledge? Yeah. I would say not yet, but uh, we had the report of the uh, World Bank and IMF by December last year, mm -hmm. and uh, also ranking the country in terms of competitiveness, in, mm. in terms of things like paying tax, uh, not featuring very well, but then uh, the, bi the biggest comment that they, it was coming out is like, the country need to release more liquidity into the market, mm -hmm. uh, and in, the, in 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 doing so, mm -hmm. then you activate, you stim you stimulate mm -hmm. the economy, mm -hmm. and by stimulating the economy, then you can start collecting more and 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 and, uh, and the likes. Yeah, so you could see from those comments of the World Bank, there was a reaction by the central bank mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. uh, Redu uh, reducing the minimum. Yes, mm -hmm. the, 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 the discount, the discount rate, mm -hmm. or the lending rate, and also uh, minimizing the uh, capital requirement by the bank so that they can actually mm -hmm. uh, give uh, uh, more loans. But one thing I wanted to react on your question: uh, Where do they get all this money? And uh, it is something that we are also worried about. You mean uh, the <coughs> PwC or uh, when you say I we, say, I mean, I tax I should, the tax, I should the say, tax men? I should <laughs> say the private sector in general because those are the ones who are going to contribute to it. Yes. Uh, so you had a budget of 29 trillion uh, last year and mm -hmm. uh, 31 trillion this year. And uh, the biggest chunk is coming from the collections by the TRA. And the TRA collections last year were pegged at 15 trillion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, if you extrapolate it to the end of June, they are only likely to collect around 13 trillion. So they are not going to they are not going to meet the budget. That's very clear. Uh, then, uh, but would that be supplemented uh, by, uh, no, by no. I don't know. I mean, I will, I, will, I, will, I will explain all this because you see, you have uh, you have sources of revenue, then you have how you spend it. Yes. So if you have the source of revenue, you're saying 15 trillion will be by TRA, two trillion by local government, I don't know, another two trillion from none tax revenue, which is mm. from government agencies, this much from uh, grants mm. and loans, and this is from donors. And then you add them up, you, you get the figure, and then you say, now once I have all this, this is how I use it. Okay. Now, you look at the biggest chunk is coming from the TRA, mm. and uh, despite the fact that they're not going to meet the target of 15 trillion, mm. the minister has budgeted for them to collect 17 trillion next, next year, year for next year. financial year. He's saying, I'm increasing by 10%, but in actual sense, he's actually increasing it for more than 10% because the base is no longer 15. Mm. The base is 13. Mm. So 13 to 14. Okay? okay. So you get worried. Uh, and uh, for you to be able to collect that much, you need to make some more tax measures to stimulate more the economy. Because uh, tax has two functions. Mm. Uh, the first function is to collect government revenues, but the second function is to facilitate trade. And this is where I was saying, Mr. Simbe, that this, there are missed opportunities. Like? Uh, like you needed to stimulate more the financial sector. Or you needed to stimulate more. So this more. budget was not a budget stimulant? Uh, you needed to stimulate more the tourism sector, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if I go back to last year, they had introduced VAT on the tourism sector. Yes. Uh, and the impact is actually going to be felt from this year because you know tourists, uh, tourist travels are booked maybe one year well, in advance. Is. So it's going to be felt this year. And for you to make sure that people come in, they needed to actually 
deal with that VAT issue. And to me, I'm not saying they should remove the whole of it. I'm saying they should only remove where VAT is charged on government-related fees. I mean, mm -hmm. someone is paying a park fee mm -hmm. to go into uh, Ngorongoro uh, Crater or to Serengeti, okay. and then on top of that park fee, which is going to the government, mm -hmm. you pay VAT. Why should there be VAT on that? Mm -hmm. If somebody's paying a concession fee for having a hotel in the park, and on top of that is paying yeah, VAT, VAT, and all that is coming back to the, to the tourists. Same. Tanzania is already expensive. So if you want to attract more and more, you need to have competitive prices. Financial sector, the same. You withdraw your money from the ATM, you get your excise duty and VAT at the same time. Uh, you, why, buy, you buy a SIM card? Yeah, yeah you buy, uh, now that's a telecom <laughs> side. I mean, telecoms is different because it's a consumer, it's yes. a consumer good. Yeah. But financial sector is actually really, uh, it has actually... So every time I put my card on the ATM, yes. draw my, man, yeah. draw my money, mm -hmm. it's the, my money I'm taking. Yes. Mm. I pay VAT on that? Yeah. yeah, you pay, let's say, 850 shillings mm. as an ATM charge. Mm. But out of that, maybe the bank is getting 600. Uh, the government is getting maybe 250, which is excise duty of 10% mm. and VAT of 18%. Mm. Where does it show uh, on my statement that I've, that money is actually... It the can money show... I, the, it money, the money <laughs> I took out yes. has generated tax income to the government and uh, to the bank. It can show on your bank statement. If you ask for your bank statement, yes. you will see what you have withdrawn and then what you got charged. And out of that, it's tax inclusive. But I mean, the best practice globally is yeah. to impose excise duty yeah. because excise duty the banks can decide whether they're absorbing it to reduce burden on you or they pass a portion to you or they pass the whole portion uh, it becomes very competitive mm -hmm. you can decide whether i should use this bank or should use the other bank but the government gets clean money uh, which is not claimable by anybody mm -hmm. but the vat system is not proper mm -hmm. because it increases the cost you can uh, and most of the time, the government collects little because if you charge VAT to a business, the business is going to claim it back. Okay. Joseph, yeah. sorry. Despite the current <laughs> um, mining or Akasha crisis with the Mchanga, yeah. I read somewhere that uh, the mining sector profits or whatever has uh, gone up. I don't know between what date, but I think it's the, the current estimate. Now, how much is the mining sector going to support mm -hmm. in terms of um, revenue uh, for this budget? Okay, I, will, I wouldn't say profits. I will say uh, the level of export of mining sector. You mm -hmm. see, it has gone up because you look at the I, the sectors that contribute significantly to the GDP. Yes. And for sure, in Tanzania, the sector that contributes the most is tourism, to start with. Mm -hmm. They bring a lot of uh, uh, forex into our country and everything. And that's why I'm saying this is an area where the government needs to nurse. It was in touch this time. Okay. Uh, it was in touch, but I say the VAT on those yes. whatever yes, could, have actually, exactly, right? yes, it could have actually been removed yes. to stimulate it further. Mm. You see, if you're a CEO of a company and you have 10 revenue streams, you nurse more the two that are bringing you more mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. You don't actually disturb it. Mm -hmm. You actually make more incentives to it. So that Do you it think grows. there's room for the minister to uh, review that? Yeah, I, I, I feel if, there's, if there's more cry. I feel the, there's the time panel? until when the, the Finance Act is passed. Mm. Yeah, but then also mine contribute a lot in terms of uh, external uh, currency because mm. it has a really quite high level of, uh, of export. And then if the price has increased a bit, yes, yes. Uh, it actually positively affects, mm. uh, affects the economy. Yeah, okay, so for yes. very quickly, um, are you hopeful that the government will be able to raise the th 31.7 trillion as proposed or it will fall short somewhere and if it falls short it won't it will, might be because it has not been able to deliver like the last year budget you know by february this year uh, we, we, are, we are supposed to be actually we are not supposed to be pessimists mm. but <laughs> the, problem, the problem is you have to be the realistic historical mm. facts. Yes. Yes. The data we have in yeah. the past maybe 20 years, yeah. mm. we have never mani ma managed to reach 100%. Yeah. Okay. But since, yes. despite that, we have managed to, uh, to achieve a lot yes. out of... But uh, so sometimes what which, which worries me, what, mm. that culture 
Mm. And I was checking the other day if other African countries do the same or other countries do the same. Mm. They noted that it's like a, a practice in most countries. So mm. African or like every in, country? Even in other countries, mm. you, you pass a budget which mm. you, it never reaches 100% mm. uh, implementation. Mm. But I think because the budget also is, is a political tool as well, mm. because you want to, to give promises and make sure that you incorporate that, even if you know you can't reach, but you're giving people hope. Next, that you get there next year. So we, we are there <laughs> after some time. Despite that weakness, over time we have seen, of course, yes. many things have done. The yes. have been done. Mm. Elipsis has been done. Mm. Schools have been done. So, mm. so, so that's why I say, perhaps they know when they do it that okay, we know we shall manage up to here. Mm. Huh? But uh, mm. let's move rather than uh, mm. pretending that we mm. we passing uh, coming with a small a, a small budget which will generate a lot of complaints from the MPs. That you have not put this and all that for my constituency, maybe that's okay. the reason. But uh, but uh, I I know that uh, at the end of the day, Dr. Mpango is like he wants to change things. That, that's what, what I, I, I'm sure I, I the same. He, he, I felt the same. He, 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 he is one of is among the few ministers we've had, I think, in government who yeah. who, who who really committed to walk the talk, because as as as, as the economist. As head of the planning commission, and have we worked for the World and, Bank and, too? And, and he yeah. worked, and he knows there are many things which he was saying as an expert. Now he is in government, then driving. Said he's trying his best to make sure that he does what he used to advise the government. Yeah. And it, it, he is unique in the sense that I uh, you know historically we have had before ministers who are economists. Uh, you try to to, to convince uh, the minister to do something which, in the common sense, is is is, is rational and. and reasonable to do but they do the opposite when they go into politics but for him i think he has gone to politics and he's being very oh. trying to be realistic I mean. okay so now who, okay, okay. This who will be yes yes uh, frank I, I just wanted to air similar sentiments to my brother here you know our budget keeps uh, has a tendency of charging more duty on soft drinks and mm -hmm. beer, mm -hmm. beer cigarettes mm -hmm. And the common things, as it were. Yeah, in, in 2016, these industries have been complaining of a very low demand. You know, the, I don't know, our economy right now, you know how it's going. Mm. People are spending less and less on these things. And you, you can see in our budget, they have been, they have been increased uh, the excess duty by 5%, which is, uh, they say, the rate of inflation. So we have the industry that has suffered a lot last year, which I expected a bit of a relief this year, is again being taxed more on so the suffering and continues so they are, uh, it, it again brings the the fear that will the government really raise this money because we know the the people are not spending the way they used to spend even the people don't drink the way they used to drink mm -hmm. so mm. can i can i just add that? yes See, uh, exercise is elastic it has elasticity mm -hmm. so you you load and people absorb you load and people absorb but you can reach a stage where you load because and people absorb. cannot absorb anymore. anymore yeah and this year we have actually seen that because there's a low consumption of beer low consumption of soft drinks is, and you look at all these rates of collection by the revenue authority which we have the figures you'll see they have not met the budget and that's why they're not meeting the budget of collection but then this is another thing then how do you capture that you either stop lo uh, loading exercise or you increase the consumption power How? of the, of the mm -hmm. most of the consumers increase are, salary increase in take home pay most most of the consumers are employees are employees and then uh, when is the last time the employees actually got a deduction on taxes uh, is it something that the minister could not be thinking about uh, All right. okay. be before we close okay um, uh, i'm bringing time time is running out mm -hmm. but I, I, in um, in responding to my last question mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I want you to also touch on very quickly. Do you think this budget will have created uh, a sense of stability for the investor? Hmm? I want you to answer that. Now, very quickly, we'll start with you, Rehema. Um, Who is the loser or winner in this budget? Very quickly. I will refrain from identifying a winner or a loser, as we all know, in economics, it's not one plus one is equal to two. Mm. There are many more variables which are not held constant, especially the most complex one, we are saying the human behavior, mm -hmm. you know? 
as in you might say I'm taxing this and people might move their money to this to that so I mean I wouldn't be able now to identify who would be the loser or the winner but I have to take you back please if you may allow yeah. take of meeting the 31.7 trillion budget. I think the measures which have been kept could somehow lead us to the target, which is the 31.7 trillion, somehow. Mm. Because we at TPSF, together with our members, I mean members of the business community, have been involved in a lot of ongoing uh, reviews, consultations and we are yet to see that work materialize meaning to see the actual review taking place in the acts the laws and procedures which we have been involved to put in our inputs mm -hmm. so we having the reviews at hand having them materialized increasing or enforcing compliance as it is happening including using of electronic devices to collect revenues, especially at the LGA levels, yes. where we are made, we believe that a lot of opportunities being missed there. Mm -hmm. Somehow, we can reach the target. All right, if okay. If we move together. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I have to cut you short. Yeah, let, let me start here and go this way. Yeah? Uh, so what, uh, all what we've said, notwithstanding, I uh, appreciate your comments on this budget. Do you think, or in your view, um, what are or will be the challenges of this well-received budget very quickly? I think the challenge, the, the main one that we have just aired here is raising the, the money that is really required to implement that budget. Okay. And also I think uh, another challenge is still most of the people are not that much compliant, so compliance is still an issue that should have been very well considered in... Mm -hmm making these policies to ensure that people really feel the pride of paying taxes and see the outcome of it. Okay. Uh, Dr. Lunagero? I, I, I think the, the challenge is uh, breaking the sort of, is it like a chain of um, consistent failure mm -hmm. in our bureaucracy mm -hmm. to be pro-investment, mm -hmm. uh, pro-private sector, pro-investment. pro poor. Pro 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 facilitation <laughs> yeah. to, to, to be there to facilitate. You know, most of our laws, the problem is yeah. uh, are based on controlling the yes. private sector, not mm. facilitating the private sector. Mm. Okay. And I see Dr. Mpango now coming with this idea that we have to change the way government operates yes. mm. from local government uh, level mm. up mm. to the central government to facilitate, to be facilitators and, then and, control. and make sure that we have systems which actually do facilitate, not just talking, but at least make sure. Yeah. Okay. If we manage that, then yes. I think we shall go a long okay. way. Okay. Joseph? I mean, <coughs> the biggest challenge uh, yeah, is certainly uh, how to raise all this money. Mm. Uh, but then you come down to one thing, that how do you stimulate it out of the economy so that it becomes more vibrant? Mm. Okay. And uh, to me, uh, I'll say, Certainly, maybe employees are a bit of losers in this game, uh, in this uh, budget, because mm -hmm. nothing has been done to them. They're still going to pay uh, a huge amount of tax. And if they pay uh, such huge amount of tax, their consumption power is reduced. And if the consumption power is reduced, then business transactions are also going to be low. Mm -hmm. And effectively, tax collection is also going to mm -hmm. be low. So uh, the minister, between now and when the Finance Act comes out, he needs to find a way of balancing this equation so that the economy is properly stimulated. Okay. And lastly, uh, it's very early also again to celebrate it because we have not seen exactly what is in the finance bill and what is in the finance act. And I passed through the finance bill which I received yesterday and even the ancillary service that we are celebrating is not the way it was supposed to come. It has come with a lot of conditions. And mm. whether it's going to be able to be implemented, yes. the, we, I, I beg a question. Uh, I mean, I, in that way, even do we, are we going to be able to, stimul to stimulate the port? Uh, and to me, it's all about stimulating the economy. All right, stimulating, stimulating the, economy, the economy. Then the rest will follow. OK, yeah. stimulating the economy, you know, investment and uh, pro P p private sector, not yeah, necessarily facilitating, facilitating bureaucracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And very quickly, one or two? I board that. 
what he has said. Mm -hmm. Reducing bureaucracy. It's costing us a lot. It's costing business a lot. Also, I would say simplifying procedures, which we have. Also, I would go back and say, like, um, simplifying the tax administration. You okay. Know? okay. How it is. Yeah, that's how... Simplifying tax administration. Yeah, like well, sort of coordinating, making all these things see eye to eye. Each agency, each ministry, let us work together and see that we are working for this nation. All right. Yeah. My panelists, thank you very much. You are, first, your contribution uh, from when we started and your conclusions are very interesting and very powerful. As usual, we hope that the powers that be will have listened first to the discussion, your inputs, and then to the, to the final world, as it were, the conclusions, which are very, very important. I mean, particularly, I take note of the uh, concern or the challenge that Dr. Nortgeo is saying. Let us not uh, see the, the government and its institutions more of a controller than a facilitator. And, um, of course, the question of stimulating the, the, the economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is very important because once you stimulate the economy, you create many facilities, including employment, which mm -hmm. you, you didn't touch, but that's, that's key. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as you said, the, it's, it's important that um, um, the government should look at how the business is operating and uh, how the business is, is doing business. Yeah. And, um, uh, simplifying the processes. Thank you very much. Viewers, you heard the views of my panelists here. They are very, very interesting uh, on the budget. The total budget for 2017-2018 of, of Tanzania shillings at 1.7 trillion as presented by the Minister for Finance, Dr. Philip Mpango, in Parliament a week ago was well received, as we have heard from my panelists here, by almost all members of the House and the general public. Uh, although, of course, the general public and analysts, however, gave it a mixed feeling somehow, um, there are those who said it is, it is a feel good budget, and uh, those who said it is too early to celebrate, as we've heard Limo just uh, uh, when he was summing up. Um, and, of course, there must be losers, there must be winners, but according to Rema, mm. she couldn't say there. You, you have losers or you don't have losers or you have winners. Mm. Um, 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 I mean, the, the budget which has, ad, uh, has tried to address the needs and the aspiration of every Tanzanian, as well as the public sector, as we have heard, it will facilitate competitiveness. But a lot more needs to be done. Um, it was also described as the motorists and the peasants budget. Um, and the others saying it is a relatively the best budget, according to Dr. Lonegelo. I, th I think it was. And for the first time, we heard here a minister of finance coming up with broad understanding and broad um, propositions, which will really affect how first we are going to to do to do business. But uh, the fundamental question, as we heard from Joseph, is and everybody here, how we are going to, 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 to raise revenue to implement the budget. Let us hope and wait and see how the government is going to raise the revenue to meet the budget planned activities, as we've heard from my panelists here. Uh, this is all we have time for today until to, to Sunday at the same time. And on Thursday at 15 hours for the repeat program, on behalf of my very able panel, Rehema Mbugi, Joseph Limo, Dr. Bohela Lunegelo, Frank Daffa, and my TBC Television Center crew. Thank you, viewers, and goodbye.